Welcome back, everybody, to the SIG Podcast, Recruits Draftcast. Um, the boys are back. We got lots on our plate today because yesterday was the CHL Top Prospect game. Uh, we're going to break it all down. We're going to talk about our standouts, maybe some disappointments. And we got news that the format is going to change starting next year. So we're going to delve into that as well. As per usual, we're going to get to Rocco's Riser of the Week. We're going to talk about our prospect of the week. And for the Habs fans, we got our Habs prospect of the week. So let's get started. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. Recruits Draft Cast. And with the first overall selection in the 2023 NHL Draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are very proud to select from the Regina Pats, the Western Hockey League, Connor Bedard. The sickest NHL draft and scouting podcast. It's going to be sick. All right. I am your host, producer Shane, joined by the fantastic Grant McCagan, the fantastic er Rocco Zappia. How are we doing, fellas? Great. How are you doing? <laughs> Better than Grant, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, that's a good description for him. Fantasticer, because it, it doesn't mean much. So, yeah, no, that one works. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll make up a word for you next show, Grant. Don't worry about it. I got you. Okay, thanks. Um, so, boys, yesterday, uh, by the time we're, fi we're filming, the, this will be released later on, but uh, we had our CHL Top Prospect game. This is always something that, um, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty exciting, right? You get to see the big boys from all three CHL leagues come together and play one game. And, and, you know, me personally, I love, I love watching these games because they're actual games, right? It's not like, like the all-star game where they're doing all sorts of fancy things and they're not really taking it seriously. These guys are, are showing up in front of like 200 scouts. So they're really trying to prove themselves. So overall, like Rocco, I think we'll start with you. What, what did you think about the game? I really liked watching the game last night. It was the last couple of years weren't quite as tight checking. This one was was really tight checking from from the beginning. I think that speaks a little bit to how deep the defensive class is this year. We're, we're calling it the year of the defenseman, and I think you know there was a, there was a handful of them last night who looked who looked like pretty solid players, and it's, it's going to be really interesting. I think to see how they end up shaking out in terms of the in terms of the actual draft order itself but it, it was a tight team it looked like a playoff game last night not a not a showcase game to your point like you said it's not a typical all-star game these guys are there playing for a reason they're playing for draft position and every year there's always players that can be a little bit harder to read for whatever reason and you get them in a game amongst their peers and and that can sometimes help if you're having a tougher time reading so the, the game is important now it's not the end all be all a, a prospect is not going to shoot himself from the third round up to the first based on one game and vice versa he's not going to drop 50 spots based on one game because it is a one-off guys are going to have good games or bad games and, and that's fine but it does help give you a read on guys and and i really like the quality of of, of play yesterday um there's a couple guys, two guys I'd, I'd like to mention for each side that really stood out to me from, you know, the start of the game all the way, all through periods. Now, different guys stood out at different points, but consistently, I thought uh, TJ Ginla and Carter Yakumchuk for the white team were just unbelievable, like all game long. Now, the Seneki and Green Tree, they are a really cool combination to watch as well, but uh, again, was all over the ice. He's a puck hound he does it all he's got unbelievable speed unbelievable skill he's hard like i don't know what else you would want in a, in a winger sincerely um he's he's going to be able to play on any single situation on the ice uh he, he's a no-brainer for a team that needs a winger now yakum is a guy that i had been ha having a little bit of a harder time getting a read on i've seen a couple good game bad game from sort of thing so to see him last night really stand out against the other top players um i kind of mentally gave him a little check mark in 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 my book that I had been looking for from him um he looks like a guy that has some pretty some pretty crazy upside being with that kind of size and and skill combination as a you know as a defenseman it, it's it's pretty nuts and then for the red team Raul Borlardi was the, the player of the game for them he had a fantastic game and this is not a guy that I've actually this was actually my first 
really live look. I've seen a couple highlights and, and that, but it was my first time seeing him. And I was really impressed with what he brought to the table. Thought he read the game um, from an offensive hockey IQ standpoint. I thought he was really strong. He seemed to be always, the puck seemed to kind of be around him a lot on its own, which is a good sign typically. And the other guy for Red, who this is actually a guy that probably of anyone in this game, um, I maybe changed my tune on him the most. I wasn't super high on him, admittedly, and it's Colton Roberts. Uh, he's another big defenseman. Uh, I had some concerns about his skating and the way he read the, the game a little bit, but I, I think more now I'm, I maybe just caught a bad game or two of his earlier on because he did look really mobile. His skating for his size, I mean, he was six foot whatever he is, six foot six, and he, he moves really well for a guy that size. And he got up and joined the rush and was able to get back. And he made some nice creative plays offensively. Um, and, and he's a guy that that I'm going to have to take a, a longer look at that I think maybe I, I got, a, I got a, a bad read on at the start of the year because he really did impress me uh, last night. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. And I I mean, we, we've discussed Roberts and I'm, I don't know how many times I said to you, have a look at Roberts, have a look at Roberts. And uh, you finally did. <clears throat> and you uh, questioned the skating. Uh, and I didn't have that issue. I, I've liked them, actually, and uh, kind of been on an island. Uh, the NHL guys haven't haven't got to see him. I mean, most of the guys that I deal with are East, Eastern scouts, so they've only, uh, I think, two, two or three of them have only seen him one time. And, you know, Vancouver's kind of up and down team, and he's had, I guess he's had some inconsistent games, but I saw some several early ones and games from last year when I was scouting him in the summer. And uh, I think he can, he could potentially be a top 40 guy. Uh, based on last night's game, I think he played, uh, you know, arguably played better than Morelli and Brunick, Brunick and a few guys that we might have a little higher uh, ranked. So uh, we'll keep a close eye on him the rest of the year and he oh, could buddy. end up being a climber. You agree with that? Yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. Well, after seeing him last night and, and again, this is the thing against all his peers in, in one in one shot. It does it does make yeah. it a little bit easier to read because it it adjusts for things like strength of team, strength of opponent. You know, everyone on your team is good. There's no one hanging you out to dry and making you look bad. And there's no weak players. And you know, your team's no no better than the other, so you can't run them out of the out of the arena either. So it, it kind of balances that playing field. And to your point, Grant, like you said, we have guys. We've got. Alec and a couple guys that, that I really like, Fisher and Brunick, I thought uh, Roberts was better than than that lot um, last night. When you have that kind of size and skating on, on the on the back end, I mean, teams always always covered it, and he looked like he he looked like he had uh, an offensive dimension. Like he he wasn't not like yeah, the puck was a grenade on his stick at all. He was making yeah. nice plays. That assist he made on on um, on the I think it was the first team red goal but he got the puck and then made it seeing eye pass across about four sticks to the other side of the ice and, and Bullard buried it and that was a really really nice play but I, I do agree with 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 Grant and like you said he had to make consistency so the, the the game or two that I saw him it could have just been a, a down game um where I didn't think he he was as quick but last night I think his skating is, is a plus asset for him especially at that size yeah um it's funny um uh, Bob's list there, TSN's list had Yakumchuk, I believe, uh, measured at six one and three quarters. And there's no way that he's uh, he's he's six three. Uh, like they have him listed at six three, and that's he's that for sure. But uh, his dangling, uh, you know, uh, at that size, a defenseman. Yeah, I've had I've had uh, Bob said the other day on our podcast that there are. There are scouts that he pulled that have Yakumchuk top five. So, you know, uh, he's a guy that, uh, like, if if you're comfortable with the skating, and I think last night, uh, what I find in these games, uh, one of the things that can, you know, that one of the, the more important things that you can glean from it are guys that you have question marks about skating. Um, you know, on the one hand, Baudouin, I didn't think stood out. He, there are questions with the skating and then with the pace last night, I thought he was pretty average. Uh, conversely, Yakumchuk, who some guys have, you know, 
wondered about his skating. I didn't see uh, he he was fine with the pace last night, and I mm-hmm. I think maybe the uh, skating issues have been overblown a bit. Yeah, he's got to work on you know maybe his mechanics are uh, aren't perfect or whatever, but it 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 may well just be a strength. Uh, you know, the six three kid that just needs to get a bit stronger because he certainly he's got he's got some dangle in his game, and uh, he, you know. He can get around people and with that size and puck protection skills, you know, and I agree, uh, you know, but obviously the two of us have loved Aginla and it's kind of nice to see because we've had him in the top 10 since uh, early December. Since and, the first uh, you know, you see these lists, uh, 15, 20. Well, he looked top 10 last night, didn't he? So it's nice when you get that confirmation and they were uh Gordon Miller was gushing about him throughout the game last night, which was nice. Um, obviously, in a low-scoring game like that, uh, you know, you, there were some good defensemen, uh, as uh, Rocco pointed out. I think on the red team, Alec. I mean, Alec was fine. I needed to see that from him. Uh, I think because there has been some question about his maybe his uh, hockey sense, but from some guys. But I think he. Uh, He's he's a solid defensive. As long as he plays a simple game, he's solid. He's mm-hmm. a big kid that can skate, and just don't try to do too much. But Danford was a guy that I thought um, he made. He looked better than Morelli. That's the second time we we saw them live, not that long ago, and we thought that Danford was better than Morelli that night. And last night he was good again. I he made some really solid defensive plays. And I think we have to also mention the goalie Mateko. Like uh both Matecos were good. Yeah, yeah. right. Sure. Well, I mean the goalie especially, you know. Yeah, yeah it's saves. funny that they were saying, you know, they had the two names that were like that different that are, you know, that that sound the same when they're talking about them. But uh yeah, but the goalie especially. I mean, we already have Mateko in the third round, so he didn't really, you know, I mean, we knew he was good. Yeah. Uh, but typically uh, goalies are kind of the last thing that I scout. And uh, he wasn't on my – people haven't, you know. I wait for guys to tell me who, who I should be looking at goaltending-wise, uh, and then I have a look at them. And I'm going to keep a close eye on him now and probably have him on my list because he was the best goalie, I thought in the game and uh, had a really solid showing. So that impressed me. Um, Parasak, I thought he showed some skill that, you know, there's been some question mark about just how skilled he is, uh, even though he's been putting up crazy points in the Western League. And that line with Aginla and, and uh, Catton, Catton. Yeah, they uh, they looked really good, and he made some really nice skilled plays. Like his skating is fine; uh, he's got good hands. We already know how smart he is because he's just mm-hmm. been piling up points. But I thought he he acquitted himself fine as far as showing that he has some skill, and maybe that's underrated a bit. Uh, we've had him just outside of the first round because of maybe questions and marks about just how much. Because when you're around six feet, you want to you, you want to see some some high level skill if you're a first rounder, and I think he put himself in the conversation for uh, being considered for the first round again, based on what what we saw against his peers last night against other skill guys. Because then you, there's also the fact, and I was saying this to uh, Rocco yesterday. One of the things I find uh, that you can take from the top prospect game. Guys that are playing on really good teams, they get, you know, sometimes they get uh, the argument that, well, I mean, he's got such good players to play with and they dominate and that's why he's got so many points. Well, Parasak looked good in the top prospect game too. So I don't think it's just a question of him having great, you know, being on a stacked team. Mm-hmm. And then the, the the other one being that a kid that plays on a poor team that doesn't have many you know, much support who uh, who plays well at the top prospect game when he's got more talented players to play with. That often, uh, those are two of the two of the things that I look for in a top prospect game where, you know, you can, uh, Kale Fleury, I, I always remember back, like he played on just a horrible 
they set records for futility in his draft year. But then he went to the he went to the top prospects game. And like he was minus 50 that year or something. And guys are saying, well, geez, you know, minus 50. Yeah. But then he went to the top prospect game and stood out and hit guys. And, you know, it really helped his draft stock. And people said, oh, okay, it, it, you know, part of it definitely is that he's on such a horrible team. So that's yeah. two things that I also can glean from, from the top prospect game that I look for in particular. Um, I think those were the main guys that uh, stood out for me. Like Boyard, like you said, obviously Seneki, I thought had had good moments. Yeah, mm -hmm. Gill, I didn't mind. Uh, I wanted to see. There's been some questions about his skating uh, from a couple guys, and I thought he looked fine. And and, and they gave him an A too, which I thought was kind of uh, you know um, kind of cool. Like obviously mm -hmm. he's. Uh, He's well respected as far as his leadership goes, and he probably played uh, played in some international events, Hockey Canada before, and they were impressed by the kid that way. So, um, Gill, I think, um, based on what I saw last night, uh, he might be someone that you uh, that you consider to move up to the second round if he keeps playing uh, as solidly as he did last night. So, those are the main guys that kind of uh, stood out for me last night. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think all three of us have have about the same list of names, but really, uh, you know, Tija Genla just for for me blew he blew me away. Like I I've, I've seen videos of him, I know what he can do, but to to see him stand out every time he was on the ice against the best, right? You're comparing apples to apples here. These guys are the best in their respective leagues, so to see him stand out against the best, that's that's even more. Um, confirmation of our, you know, you guys ranking him in the top ten so early on. He, he's, yeah, exactly. He's making the, he's making the the recruits uh, crew look pretty good. So a tease again, the man. That's he was he was awesome, and 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 for phenomenal. for for me, he is the probably the second best winger available this year. Um, at yeah. least that's that's the guy that I would want if if I'm taking a winger. Um, there's one guy that we're going to talk about later on. Who's, who's the number one winger? But yeah. after him, I'll, I'll take again all day. There's not there's nothing about his game. If you want to nitpick his game, there was a couple times, maybe once or twice, he could have made a pass instead of a hold. But I mean, when you're when you're flying and you're feeling it, just keep the puck. So exactly. No, he is he is a defensive a defenseman's nightmare. That's what I call him. His forechecking is is nonstop. He is so aggressive on the puck and he's so skilled. As a defenseman, that's that's the exact type of player you do not want to face. So, I, I can't wait to see yeah. him in, in a playoff game. Oh my god! Yeah, he's built for that. He is so. built for that. So, uh, great stuff there, uh, Grant. Do you have something? Yeah. Well, again, uh, uh, I mean, we didn't get to see the Sally last night. We were looking forward <laughs> to that. Uh, Apparently, that was that was a myth. Apparently, Berkeley <laughs> Cat made that up. So. I like how serious he took that. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, no, that was funny. And then uh, I, I had heard the the selfish knock somewhere along the line here with him. And maybe it's because he doesn't have as many, like he scored a lot of goals, but hmm. he made some dandy passes last night. Yeah, Those yeah. little, uh, you know, into that, that one tip pass that he made that was just excellent yeah. to, um, to Catton. Um, that line was flying and he's... Uh, you know, uh, I don't think the NHL is going to make the mistake of not drafting this again in the top 10 like mm. like they did the last time around. Yeah, that's it. I'm sure Craig <laughs> Button's going <laughs> to call a few people say, listen, I, you know, I, I drafted it again. You should, too. But uh, um, so, you know, that's about our standouts. Right. But now today we had some interesting information coming from Jeff Merrick who said that the format of this game is going to change moving forward. And I think it's for the better. Uh, he said that it's going to be a two game series for uh, it's going to be the top CHL team against the top U S team. So now you get even, you know, you get to, to see the U S against Canada, essentially, right. The, the CHL players go at it for two games. I'm, I'm loving this. Like if that, if that's true, I'm loving this. That's awesome. Well, I don't mind the CHL top prospect game, to be honest with you, but I'm just wondering whether the two games means that there's going to be two squads. 
on each. You'd have to think so. You'd have. To I hope so. Because so. it's three leagues, there's right? More than, yeah. There's more than 20 yeah. good prospects to look at each year from Canada, mm -hmm. for sure. And arguably in the States not today now, too. Like every one of those kids in that game last night with typically, uh, you know, all but maybe three or four get drafted and sometimes all. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why you, uh, you know, you, you you watch this game with so much interest because there's kids that maybe are even off the radar a little bit that play and uh, you get to see them against their peers and you get to judge them against their peers. So I really hope that uh, the two games means that it's two squads that get yeah, to play. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm, I've got a little bit of an issue with it, to be honest mm -hmm. with you, because I there's more than 20 kids that I want to look at in a top Well, that's, that's the thing, and I, I agree with you there, Grant. As long as it's not taking away spots from CHL kids, because, you know, there, there is more than 20, and not only that, it's the, it's the, it's the guys after the top 20 that you really need to see Anyways, you really want to see, you know, these guys from, you know, the, you got the top 10 guys or so, and that's and that's fine. But after that, the, you know, to see them against each other is how you, you can really get a good, good gauge. So to take half of them out, not that they're going to do that, but if they, if they did, that would be unfortunate. And, and the kids deserve to play in a showcase game too. Like it's a highlight for their career, uh, regardless of where they end up as a, as a pro player. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, two games set, hopefully – it means I would assume that they're going to take two different rosters. I wouldn't mind, honestly, I wouldn't mind a little hybrid tournament where you, you you have the one CHL top prospects game, the two teams, and then from those two teams you take you take twenty to play the two games against the Americans, and you, and you do both and have it a you know like a th they used to do three games against against Russia before all that started. So you could do three games here and make a little hybrid, but as long as it's not taken away from the kids who, who have an opportunity to go out there and, and showcase themselves, then I really like it because yeah. it adds an advantage because you're not getting to see the, the American kids against a lot of them are either they're playing high school or they're playing yeah. USHL or they're playing NCAA. So to get them all on the same ice would be great. But to, to Grant's point, hopefully it's not at the expense of, of any CHL talent because they do deserve to showcase uh, what they've worked for. Mm -hmm. Well, if we'd have had that just one team against the other, Colton Roberts probably isn't playing. Well, there um, exactly, and we don't get to see what we saw last night. Yeah, just yeah. as an example, right? So, yeah. or maybe even Boyar maybe isn't even playing, or you yeah. know, or whatever. So, I mean, uh, no, I I really hope that it's two teams. Uh, yeah, that'd be great if they, you know, if they if they did something like what you suggested, but. Obviously, that would make too much sense. So <laughs> they're they're yeah. not. So, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, presumably it's going to be two teams. I hope so. That's it. No, the, the details have yet to be ironed out, right? But as far as as far as we can tell, right, it's it's only logical to have two teams if it's going to be two games. So we'll just assume the best for now, and and we'll see next year. But uh, exciting development, seeing that the U.S. Uh, players are going to be involved in the game as well. That's that's really, really good. So um, yeah. that's about it for the CHL Top Prospect game. Now we move on to Rocco's Riser of the Week. Tell us a little bit about Mr. Kieran Walton. I thought they might play the, uh, the Walton's <laughs> theme there. No, so we got Kieran Walton, left winger for the Sudbury Wolves, wearing number 22 on your screen massive specimen coming in at six foot six, 210 pounds, uh, 39 games played this year. He's got 15 goals, uh, 32 points, big, big, big winger blends as uh, size with skating and skill elements to his game. So it's kind of exciting in that sense. I find he moves around the ice really well for his size, especially given that, um, not just offensively, defensively, uh, he uses his speed while he can close guys, uh, close guys off back checks hard, um, so he's not a big lug out there, which which you really like to see. You might want to see his quickness improve just a little bit, but at, at six foot six, I'm not going to be not going to be too hard on him for that because that's that, that's very normal and, and that'll come. I don't see a ton of issues with with mechanics or anything, so I'm, not, I'm really not worried. I think his skating overall, considering his size, is a plus attribute for him. He brings some sneaky offensive skill to the table here. Um, he's playing third line minutes on a, on a really stacked team. So he's only getting about 13, 14 minutes a night. He's not seeing first power play, seeing the second unit, but he's still 
he's still somewhere, you know, just under 0. 0.75, 0. 0.8 points per game. So mm -hmm. given the amount of ICCs, I, I actually like, I actually like uh, his, his counting stats offensively. With the puck on his stick, I find he has pretty good vision. Uh, he doesn't get tunnel vision. He he's really does a good job scanning the offensive zone and seeing what the smart play is to make. He can hit a guy uh, with an open pass. He, he, on the first clip there, he had a really nice assist, I thought, on a, on Villeneuve's goal. So he is able to dish the puck. Um, good stick as well on him, so he's able to fish loose pucks out, control pucks in feet, control them in traffic, um, which, again, being a bigger guy – you like to see because that does speak to some ability to be able to to, <laughs> to get down there alone get loose pucks out from a bunch of guys half your size uh as a shooter um he does a nice job kind of gliding into open areas he's not really ever standing still unless it's kind of in front of the net where he's trying to create traffic but if the play's kind of fluid he does a nice job of always kind of floating around creating seams not making it easy for the for the d to key on him uh, and that results in um you know him him being able to get some good shooting opportunities off um, he has a pre pretty decent one timer. You don't see it as much in, in this game, but I've seen some other times where he can he can rip the puck pretty good when he when he has an opportunity. He plays uh, plays with really good support. Supports the puck very well. I find actually in, in in both zones, especially as a weak side winger, he knows what to do to stay high, support the puck, make sure it's not giving anything up the other way, and also sneak in um, to that high area for for openings as well. Knows for the net which you would hope he does as, as a big player, which is good to see. So nose for the night, he's always kind of lurking around the crease, waiting, kind of biding his time, eyeing, seeing when a loose puck might pop out. You can tell he's actively looking for those opportunities. Um, so that's, that's good. He's got some good sense around the front of the crease. Big body, so as you'd expect, he does use his body to protect the puck, protect the puck very well. It's, it's tough for guys to get to get much on him. You know, you can't really reach around him. He, he does a good job turning his back and using his size and strength to fend guys off. And um, now with bigger guys, sometimes in junior, it's almost too easy for them to do that. So you can kind of sometimes give them a little too much credit, but what, what can you do? You never really know until they get out against other full grown men, more of their size and strength. But again, at least in junior, he looks like very strong and very able to protect the puck uh, quite well. Like I mentioned earlier, he's good on the back check. I don't have any issues for him in terms of uh, his effort level uh, two-way. I kind of find he, he seems to kind of take some pride in forcing turnovers because he does it on a few occasions in these clips. Um, so you like when he has a good effort. I'm not worried about him being a, a one-dimensional floaty type player. Good stick defensively, um, like I said, able to fish him out, turn plays the other ways, creates a couple odd man rushes for his team here in, in, in these clips. Um, so in terms of areas to improve, I would like him to be a little bit more physical. I'd like him to use his big body a little bit more. Six foot six, 210 pounds. For me, I want to see you running guys through the boards pretty much as long as it's a, it's a clean play. Uh, put a little fear. You don't have to play dirty, but play play hard. You're, you're twice everybody's size and, and people on the other team, they should, they should be timid of you when you're on the ice. And I don't think, I don't find he brings any sort of physical intimidation factor. And now that is something that can change over time, but he, but he plays a, he plays a skilled game. So he's, he's out there. He's not really looking to be out pounding guys, but at six, six, he, he's not, I don't find him soft, but he could be a little bit harder. Um, if there was one thing that, that, that would be it, but I do like him. I do like him overall. Cause he does bring, he does bring the skill to it. He's not just a size player. I could see him having some different opinions on him. I could see guys having some pretty divergent thoughts about what he might project to. There's not a lot of guys at this size um, that can play in the league. He's, he's almost too big as a forward, but there's a couple guys that, that can do it. And if he can do it, you can be tough to play against. I think his range, if you like him, you might like him somewhere late second. If you don't like him as much, his tools are good enough to, to keep him no later than the fourth for me. Um, I personally see him somewhere comfortably in the, as a third rounder right now, but he, he's a guy that's just come on. He's, he's not in a ton of top 90 lists sort of so far yet. So um, my first chance to see him was, was this past week or so I, I watched three or four games. So someone to keep an eye on because um, I, I feel like he really could go either way. And when the game gets more physical in the playoffs, you'll, you'll see if he, if he does have that physical element or not that when that that's when that question will be answered for him. 
Uh, but there, there's some upside here. He's, he's, he's a very toolsy player and it's, you know, you can't teach big. Yeah. That, uh, what, what do you think of scouting that game with the blue uh, numbers with the good thing? He's six, six. So you just look for the tall guy, right? That's but it. blue numbers on blue shirts. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it helps when he's playing with Villeneuve. It makes it pretty obvious which one is which. Right. Oh, right. But yeah. Yeah. Not but ideal. I, yeah. No, I, I mean, I'm looking, I'm squinting. Is that Villeneuve? Cause the other guy wasn't that big either, but uh, I've tried to scout a couple of Sudbury games with those blue numbers on blue shirts and it's just why do they why do they insist on doing that like it just drives me crazy it maybe it looks good to the designer but there's no practical purpose for it you know yeah. don't put blue don't put dark numbers on dark sweaters it just it, it's happening more and more where the practicality's out the window and it's all about oh that looks you know that that's the person that designed it we can't argue with it that that looks great but Anyway. What do you think? What do you think about chrome helmets? <laughs> chrome helmets. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, that there are there numbers on the helmets. I mean, <laughs> no. Yeah. No. I. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it either. But you know, especially when the glare, you know, there's a glare and you can't see the number. You know, the glare off of the chrome <laughs> helmet. But yeah, uh, he's got a pretty good knee bend for a six six kid. You know. A lot, a lot of times they're kind of upright and uh he's pretty he's got pretty strong lower body considering uh you know he's a 17 year old 66 kid right um i think we were both a little disappointed with his game last night at the top prospect a couple times in the corners there where i wanted him to you know be hard on the puck and it was just kind of he was give him a little and then you even saw in the highlights there or he go into the corner and he just kind of, you know, yeah. Yeah. you, you got to use your size. If you want to, if you want to be in the top two rounds, you're six, six, nothing drives scouts crazier. And maybe it's not, you know, always fair, but they don't want to see a, a, a guy that they perceive as being a bit soft. Uh, that's that size. I mean, he may, if he was five eleven, you wouldn't say he's soft. Right. No, but, exactly. and, and that's why I said, like, I don't want to call him soft, but just because he's so right. big, we'd like to see him have that element. That's yeah, because there's because there's, no, there's no friggin' reason, there's no reason why you can't hammer a guy clean, like clean, but hammer a guy to the point that for yeah. the rest of the game he knows where you are on the ice. And don't say it, friggin'. That's uh, you, uh, you corrected yourself there. I'm glad you did that, uh, Rocco. We don't yeah. we don't say friggin' on the on the draft cast. Yeah, no, no problem. But yeah, but like you said, it's it's, fr it's frustrating a little bit when you are that big. And I, I, I didn't think he had the best game last night. But again, I'm not going to crucify a guy for not having his hundred percent best in a in a one off game. Um, but there were times that there were times that yeah, you definitely like to see him be a little bit harder. And like even in those clips, like a lot of times, and he has a good stick, so he's fishing the puck with a stick a lot of time. But so, sometimes just go in and, and just pound a guy and then and take the puck. And yeah, but but there's lots of time between 17 and, and 22 years old to to add that and and fill out his frame and and make that a, a dimension because there's there's no reason there's no reason that he he can't have that dimension to his game. But these these are not finished products. So that's it. Right on. Kieran Walton is Rocco's riser of the week. Now, Rocco, you had mentioned earlier in the show that there was a winger in particular that you liked a bit more than Tija Ginla. And well, he just so I, happens. Oh, oh. Well, I, well, I don't. I don't know that I necessarily like him more because I there's there's nothing about a Ginla's game that I would rather him play anywhere else. But this guy is so so damn talented. Yeah, yeah, and he just so happens to be our prospect of the week. That being, of course, Ivan Demidov, who had himself one hell of a game. Let's have a look. Yeah. Well, this is the game. Uh, he he had two games this uh, past week. Mm -hmm. And in this one here, he was Mr. Playmaker, goal and four assists. Um, so, you know, you j I just quickly grabbed the, uh, the highlights of, the, of, his, uh, of his points in that one. And uh, you could just see that uh, it, the vision on him, and there's his goal. Of course, just a one-timer, boom. Uh, 
but he's uh he's got great vision and puck skills and um creates a ton of offense now here is the game that i uh his last game uh he had five goals and uh, now <laughs> <Crazy>. this <laughs> he had a natural hat trick in the first eight and a half minutes of the game. <laughs> now this is just look at this shot I mean, it's just labeled. And here, uh, here you get a better close-up look. Oof. Like that's a sniper. So, but on top of that, I mean, th this guy has he has puck carrying skills that uh, are, I mean are rare. He mm -hmm. he reminds me of Kovalev with the puck. There's just he's so balanced uh so shifty so strong um silky silky mitts uh, and you'll see some of these that are just right here ah oh. that and then we'll get to see this here just check him out here what he does here come on <laughs> how often have you seen that and that's a 17 year old kid yeah like it's just this game, every single shift, he did something like that. Like, not exactly like that, but something that just made your jaw drop. And here's another one. Like, I don't... <laughs> I <laughs> I was watching this game like that, that. He didn't even get a point on that one. And there's a few others like that in this game where it's just every shift, he did something dynamic. Um, he's the most skilled player in this draft class. I think Celebrini is super skilled. This guy's even got even more skill. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's listed at 168 pounds. They better get the scale back out because I think that was from two years ago. And, and I mean, there's some shifts in here where you'll see it, just how strong he is that he knocks guys down, he bowls guys over. Uh, unless he's uh, pound for pound the strongest 168 pound teenager on the planet, I'd be uh, shocked if... Uh, He's not closer to 190, mm -hmm. but um, his uh, like, look at how he, you know, his uh, his feet are just. He just he shields the puck. He uh, he changes his direction on it with his feet just so artfully. It's just uh, a pleasure to watch this kid. I mean, you you know how much I loved him in the summer. He mm -hmm. was I thought. SKA's top uh, forward a lot of nights in the KHL, but there, there you got a glimpse of uh, you know he's competitive too. So just think of uh, if Kovalev would have been a two-way player, <laughs> uh, consistently competitive. That's what this guy looks like to me. And then again, you see his strength. Like he shields the puck perfectly, then do, does the beautiful drop pass to to the teammate. Here, wham! You'll see this up close. Just how how good a shot that this kid has. Mm. How many goalies going to stop that in the NHL? None. Like that's perfect shot, just above the pad, right off the inside of the post. So. I mean, it's just uh, the offensive skills there. Again, a guy that runs into, like, he runs right over guys. So um, <laughs> I don't know that there's flaw in his game. So uh, other than the fact that he's playing in Russia and we may not see him for two or three years, but as far as his game goes, I just uh, I don't see any any part of his game that I think is bad or below average. That, that includes his defensive game, his competitiveness, his uh, physicality, his character. I've heard nothing but great things about, you know. I talked to a, a guy that uh, that has Russian connections in the summer all the time, and, you know, he wasn't crazy about Michkov's uh, character, but he said this guy, he, he said he's the real one, this mm. kid. And he told me that in the summer, and I, you know, <laughs> look at this. Like he just, it, it, he's got, he's better, he's a better puck carrier than Bedard, I believe. Like That's it's just, that, look, 
Oh, that was God. that was shorthanded. Okay. That whole shift, he dominated with the puck, and he was on. He was killing the penalty. Ridiculous. Look at this. I like the Sully after too. Hang up the phone. Yeah, That's yeah, good. yeah. No, that I mean, <laughs> I just uh, wow. <laughs> Bedard had that four goal game last year. Mm. You know, in the World Juniors, that well, one of the one of the best junior performances I've ever seen. But this game last yesterday, I have not seen a better performance from a, a player in a junior hockey game ever. Wow. This is just <laughs> well look at him. Yeah, yeah. He's playing with these um, guys and he's and he's 17 years old. You know? Mm -hmm. I just have not I just uh um he's playing against a Mursky. They're a first place team in their division. What the hell? <laughs> they had not given up more than six goals in a game. The last time they played against SKA Demidov was injured. They lost three. They beat SKA three two the last time they played them. Wow. Well, Demidov first eight minutes put the game away, and then just kept doing it all game. And they won twelve nothing with him getting six points and five goals. So this just absolutely floored me. I, you know, I mean, I I had him three. We had to, some discussions, and I dropped him back to four because Soleev. You mm -hmm. know, but I, oh, I'm putting them back up to three or maybe two. I just, this yeah. just, there, that's not even a point. And he just made a, just another fantastic play. It was just, uh, have you ever seen a, uh, an offensive display like that? I, I it, honestly, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot I was on a podcast for a minute because I was like watching the screen, like just with my jaw <laughs> dropped. I forgot to chime in, I, but I was just like, oh my God, he is. <laughs> Slick, his edges are unbelievable. Like, like he he has edges like Kenny Wu. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. But I mean, That's absurd. You know, and, and Grant, like the only reason why this guy's not in conversation for first overall is because he's Russian. If if Ivan Demidov was playing, uh, you oh. know, in in the Saskatoon Blades. Yeah. He'd be right up there with, with Celebrini, right? Oh, well, I mean, six goals, five assists in two games. In his last 15 games, 18 goals, 19 assists. This year in junior, he's averaging 1.96 points per game. The next closest is 1.4. Like, it's just, he's, he's getting called back up to SKA. They'd be nuts. Like, he's yeah. just, he, he can be in their top two lines now. I know they're conservative there and that they don't like to, you know, uh, I mean, he, even though he was their best player, I think in preseason, mm -hmm. uh, he started the year fourth line and in the box. And then they, and then he got injured, sent to junior. There's just no way that he can't help SKA right now. I mean, that he's too good for junior Russian junior, bring him up. I think after that game, they, they'd they be nuts to. not to. So, uh, I mean, the, the way things are shaping up with this draft class now, you know, uh, Celebrini's like uh, like Bob was saying, he's not Sidney Crosby, but there's a lot of similarities. Mm -hmm. He's a lot of similarities to John Taves. So let's say he's just John Taves. He becomes, right? Pretty good. Uh, then you've got Soleev. Yes. Yeah. And then you got Soleev, who's, uh, you know, Victor Hedman comparisons. Yeah. Then you've got the the Belarusian kid that's well, six three not, yeah. that's tearing up NCAA as a freshman, you know, maybe he the next Sergachev or better. Then you've got the the six four center that's over almost a goal a game in junior, that's tough uh, Keith Primo. Mm -hmm. Then you've got Demidov who might be better than all that's more skilled than all of them. Yeah, like he's he's going to be better than Kaprizov uh, and Panarin. I just don't see. I he's just I have not seen a Russian prospect with that skill since Bure. I haven't. It's just uh he's he is so dynamic and I'm yeah. so and then we're not even getting into it again, who could be the next again. <laughs> Literally, yeah. <laughs> well, Sam Dickinson, uh Perek could be the like uh you know, we hear Eric Carlson comparisons for his offense. Yeah. 
this top 10 is one of the best. It It's shaping up to be one of the te- best top 10s in draft history. So I'm, I'm getting more and more excited. If you're a non-playoff team in the NHL right now, get excited, guys, because you are getting a heck of a prospect. Mm-hmm. Carter Yakumchuk, I mean, uh, six three man. dangler that's what? Point, more than a point per game defenseman yeah. in the dub. And we haven't, uh, even, we haven't even mentioned the three Americans yet. No, Iserman, you know, uh, uh, Connolly, Connolly, yeah. Connolly, who just one of the best World Junior A Challenge uh, performances ever. Yeah. Like the top 15 this year, it stacks up with uh, some of the best of all time. It really does. So I, it's, I was it, looking it, at uh, 2013 and 2015 today and, and, you know, it, it might not have McKinnon or McDavid, but the that sort of that sort of depth where if you miss the playoffs, you're getting you're getting a player, and it's not just the top ten. Like like you said, it goes to 12, 13, 14. Like if, yeah. if you're in the playoffs, you're you're getting a guy. Bliam, we hadn't we hadn't mentioned, but he's tearing it up too. There's there's yeah. lots of guys. Catton was coming here as a top five pick. He's we're not even talking about him in the top ten. Hellenius Hellenius is the first line center in the uh, in Liga in his draft year, and yeah. he. And that right now, I mean, he's dropping as far as I'm concerned. You know, he's might be 11 or 12. So it's just uh, yeah. the, the, the top wrong, 12, right? top 15 yeah. is just, it, it's really, it, it's shaping up to be, you know, uh, one of the one of the best top 15s as far as quality and depth goes. It's just, it's a bit of everything. So, no, uh, no. yeah, it, it's it's exciting. It's exciting. That's it. No, I mean, teams drafting in the top 10, even beyond, they almost can't go wrong. Like, <laughs> if you manage to screw yeah. this up, <laughs> well, damn, like that, yeah. that's that's yeah. bad. But uh, yeah, uh, yeah De- Ivan Demidov is, is an exciting, exciting player. I think that's the best way to describe him. He's just exhilarating, a uh, fantastic hockey player. Uh, before we move on to our Habs prospect of the week, obviously, we have to thank our man Rocco. As always, for your insight, cue the music. See you next week, buddy. Thanks, guys. <laughs> awesome. All right. We thank Rocco, as always, uh, for his valuable <laughs> insight. Now we get into our Habs prospect of the week. And this is a guy that, Grant, you've always been high on, and so have I. But he's kind of fallen out of mind for a lot of Habs fans for no particular reason because he's actually playing really well and that's Oliver Kapanen. Talk to us about him. Yeah, for sure. No, Kapanen's uh he's uh I mean we're not gonna see Demidov here, obviously. <laughs> you know, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a letdown after what we just saw, but uh hard to be um uh he's he's just having a terrific year and it's really really come on in the last month for Kalpa. He's been there first, he's you know, even when he was in his uh, slumping there as far as uh, offense goes they kept uh, he, he was still playing 19 minutes a game because he's just so uh he's a two-way centerman you know he he, he plays both ends of the rink uh good on face-offs r- really strong along the boards uh in his own zone coming back but these uh these highlights um give you an idea of the offensive potential that he has as well to be a, a middle line center in the NHL and, and soon like him and Beck are going to be duking it out for a middle line center spot, yeah. you know, starting training cap next year. Um, he uh, it's funny. I've seen him be the, be on the point man and run the power play of Kalpa this year. And he did a good job. Uh, but now they've got him playing kind of where Suzuki does a lot of times for the Canadians, kind of the deep high slot. Hmm. And uh, he's got a really good shot, as you see in in these highlights, and scored a few goals with it uh, on the power play in recent games. Um, in his last six games, he has four goals and nine points, while averaging nineteen oh four in ice time a game. The top score in Liga is averaging one point two one points per game. Hmm. So, you know, one point five points per game, albeit in a small sample size, is is really impressive at this level especially for a 20 year old. Like he doesn't turn 21 till like late July. His Corsi rating over those six games was 61%. Again, for a 20 year old center playing in Liga, 
there haven't been many uh, through the years that uh, that are playing as as an important two way role as uh, Kapnan is. He's just he, uh, he's he's playing exceptional for his age, and I really think people don't necessarily, you know, people in North America don't see him. So, and then they look at this overall stats and think, well, you know. That that's not great, but considering his role again, there he was the guy back, you know, the last guy back. Uh, he's just very smart defensively, conscientious. There he is in the middle again, getting off a good shot. So he's got some uh, goal scoring ability on the power play. Uh, his skating has really improved, and that uh, that helps him uh, with the forechecking, like we just saw on that play there. Uh, very smart, you know, gets the puck, stole the puck, made the play. Um, what, what really stood out in this game too, for me was that he had nine shots on net. Hmm. So he's taken 35 shots on goal in his last six games, which is great. One player in league is averaging that close to that a game. So, um, I mean, he was constantly finding the prime scoring areas in this game and ended up, like I say, with nine shots on goals. So a dominant performance by him. And uh, very impressive, uh, and, and I'm including all of the highlights, obviously, along with here at the end. I'm showing all of his points that he got in the last in the last nine games. So, very impressive. Yeah, yeah. As your Habs fan, pretty excited about that, and and the idea of potentially drafting in the top ten, as we mentioned. Uh, you know, the Habs prospect pool is going to deepen very quickly, and and it's already pretty deep. So. Uh, should be pretty excited about that. And that'll about do it for us. We thank you for tuning in as always. Your support does not go on deaf ears. We we really appreciate it. Uh, Grant, uh, any parting words from your end? Well, we got the word to uh, wrap it up there. Guys got to get on to another <laughs> podcast. So that's it. No more. We're, we're busy here. We're, we're pretty busy. But, uh, it, you know, we, we had an interview with with the legend himself, Bob McKenzie. So if you haven't go if you haven't checked that out yet, we do yourself a favor. He talks in depth about, you know, the big boys in this draft. Lots of great insight there. So we highly recommend you go check that out and uh, click subscribe because we're not done. We got more more interviews coming, more shows like this. So if you like this stuff, click subscribe and and and. You know, never meet, never miss a video. So uh, thank you all for tuning in and we will see you in the next one. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast recruits Draftcast on YouTube, Facebook, Google play and Apple podcasts.